This segment is about the chloride test. And on the chloride test, if you'll read on the instructions, you see that there is a low range test. And always start with a low range test. Unless you have been testing your creek for a while, several months at least, and always figure out that you always need to go to the high range test, then that's fine. You can start with the high range test. But always starting out, start with a low range test, and we'll see how that goes. So chloride test kit is going to include a square mixing bottle with markings on it. And for the high range test will be your plastic measuring tube. We'll see if we need that or not. So always with this chloride test, you always need to start with the lab blank first. A lab blank is going to be doing, performing the test, but you're testing deionized water. The whole purpose behind the lab blank, this is another part of our quality assurance that, that's built into the program. Testing a deionized water for the lab blank, it's going to be testing the deionized water in case you need to dilute and use the deionized water. It's going to be testing the equipment, making certain you're not getting a false positive reading. It's testing the reagents. It's testing you as a scientist. So that's the whole purpose behind a lab blank. So I always do the blank first. So rinse three times with deionized water. The square mixing bottle. Then you are going to fill up to the 23 line. That's the top line on the square mixing bottle with deionized water. And always fill at eye level. So whether you hold the bottle or whether you set it on a level tabletop, either way. I'm going to put mine down on the tabletop. So that means I have to scoot and get down a bit too. So at the 23 line, you want the very bottom of the water curve to be touching that top 23 line. That's the proper way to fill it. And we're going to start with adding the chloride 2 powder packets. You're going to add one packet and use a pair of scissors to cut the top off. And try not to poke your fingers or pencil or anything inside the packet. So usually just kind of squoosh it open and add the chloride powder reagent to the bottle. And then you're going to swirl agitate so that that reagent powder dissolves. Might take a couple of swirls. So chloride should always start out as yellow. Whether you're running your creek water or the blank, it should always start out as yellow. Then you're going to titrate with the silver nitrate. Again, that's just adding a drop and swirling until you get a distinct color change that stays. So this is the blank deionized water. So really there should not be any chlorides in this water. So this should change at the first drop as it is the lab blank. And swirl agitate so it's completely one color. And so we have our color change. And actually this is more orangey brick red than really what we would need. So if this was the creek water test, you would back off one drop. But since this is the blank, we enter in on the data sheet a one number of drops used for chloride for the blank, multiply by five since we're doing this at the low range test. So in essence, the lab blank is going to equal five milligrams per liter of chloride. Now we with Blue Thumb all understands that that just means that everything was working properly and that the solution did change on the first drop. So we're doing good so far. So our blank is working, our deionized water is working, our reagents are working fine, the equipment, and us as a scientist. So our blank is good. So now we need to run our creek water tests. But first we need to rinse three times with deionized water to get that previous test all rinsed out. And now we will rinse with our creek water three times. Again, that's just going to rinse out any sort of deionized water that's still in there and it's going to coat the inside of the bottle with the water that we're going to be testing. 
that's just all good lab practices. Filling with creek water to the 23 line. So I need to get some more water in my syringe, so always stir before you pull out water. And we're going to fill this to the, to the 23 line with creek water. So the, bottom of, the very bottom of the curve of the meniscus touches the 23 line. Add the chloride 2 powder packet to our sample. Cut the top off. Add that to our bottle. And swirl, agitate. Don't ever put your thumb or hand or fingers over the top of the bottle. Just swirl, agitate until that is dissolved. So we're starting out as yellow, so everything's still working good. Now we will titrate with our silver nitrate. We're going to add a drop and swirl, agitate. Keep count of the drops. So that's one. Two. We want the color to stay. That's going to be our end point. It's three. We're getting close. And that's four. Get a better shake on this. So that is actually our color change. It's not yellow yellow anymore. We could actually add another drop and see what that does. And that is slightly a little bit too orangey, but if you called this the end point, I really wouldn't argue with you. So it's somewhere around four or five drops. So um, again, this is a low range, so you're gonna multiply every drop by five. So I would have called it four drops. So that would have been 20 milligrams per liter of chloride. If you called this the end point, that would be fine too. And just say 25 milligrams per liter was your end point. Now, is that the right answer or not? We don't know. So we have to do our repeatability. So empty out the liquid of the square mixing bottle. Rinse three times thoroughly with our deionized water. Get all that previous test out of there. So we're running our second creek water test, so we need to rinse with the creek water three times. Swirl it around the inside of the bottle. And then fill it up to the 23 line with creek water. Fill it at eye level. So the very bottom of that meniscus curve is at the top of the 23 line. I'm going to add the chloride 2 powder packet. Swirl, agitate so that powder reagent dissolves. And it starts out as yellow, so that means that's working properly. So I need to add our titrate again with our silver nitrate. That's one drop. And it disappears. Two drops. Make certain and agitate, shake between drops. That's three. It's getting close. That would be our fourth drop. And so it is a slight change. Maybe this one I would actually call five drops at our color change on this one. So I think this one, I'd say it changed on the fifth drop. So five times five is 25 milligrams per liter. So our first test had 20 milligrams per liter. 
This one had 25, and that's perfectly respectable for a repeatability. On the chloride test, you need to be within at most two drops difference to have repeatability. If you're more than two drops, do a third drop or do a third test, and hopefully you, you achieve repeatability that way.